Hello and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to see if we can create an outbound rest call in ServiceNow in under five minutes. But before we kick off I want to share some big news and that is that this week we hit a hundred subscribers on the channel um, and that's something I, I didn't think was possible certainly not this early. Um, which leads me to say a massive thank you to everyone who's subscribed so far and all the comments of support. It's been brilliant. If you are new around here though and yet to subscribe, please go ahead, subscribe and hit the bell icon and you'll be notified whenever I upload a new video just like this one. So back to the main event. I'm going to be creating a outbound rest call in ServiceNow Flow Designer to see how easily it is to configure and the different types of elements I might need to make this work. The rest call I'll be making, um, it's well, it's an endpoint that I found, it's a free API that I found just on the internet. Um, there's loads out there to play with and I urge you to go and just just, just muck about with some. I'll drop the, um, the one that I'm using into the description. But I wanted to make this a bit more entertaining, a bit more interesting than um, just using like a ServiceNow e-bonding or bringing back the weather or something that we've all seen before. So I'm actually going to try and make ServiceNow funny, which is perhaps a tall order um, but I'm going to use um, an API which when we call it it should return us a random dad joke when requested who doesn't like dad jokes um, will they actually be funny uh, probably not but we're going to give it a shot um, so what elements in service now are we going to play with to get this thing working well surprisingly not a lot so we're going to be using Flow Designer. I've mentioned that. Um, we're going to create an application in the studio, um, which is in effect our spoke. Um, we're going to use a REST activity within our action. We're also going to use a JSON pass activity within the action that we're going to create. We need to create an ACL. You'll see what that does um, as we go through the video, but that's really important. We're also going to create a UI action. So it's great us creating this action in Flow Designer, but we, we want to show that we want to see it on screen that hang on, this API calls work. So what we're going to do is create a UI action on the incident table that when we click it, it's going to call our um, action that we've created in Flow Designer via script and it's going to plonk us the joke on screen on the incident form. Why would you do it on the incident form? You probably wouldn't to be honest with you but incident is a table that we've all got in our instances so why not just use it i could have created something else but i didn't so okay let's get started okay so let's do this let's see if we can make an outbound rest call in flow designer and see the results when we click a ui action within five minutes it's going to be very very tight We've got our timer, we've got our instance, let's go. Right, so the first thing we're going to do is go to Studio. So we're going to create an application, which is in effect, it's going to be our spoke. So we're going to call it, um, oh, we'll call it joke. Oh, it doesn't really matter. Spelling doesn't matter now. Okay, that's what we're going to do. Let's go to the application. The first thing we're going to do inside the application is we're going to go straight ahead and we're going to go to Flow Designer and we're going to create our action in Flow Designer. I'm going to call it get. Oh no, why am I doing that? Get joke. Okay. So we don't need any inputs since it's a very, very simple endpoint that we're hitting, and we're going to pick the activity of rest. Now, this is great. So we can use connection alias if we wanted to, but this time I'm going to set it all up manually because I've been to their website, the, the, the endpoint um, that I'm using, and I've got all the information I need. So I haven't set, set up a credential um, or an alias. So we're going to build it manually. We haven't got a resource path. On the um, documentation on their website, they tell us that we need to pass in some headers. So one is accept and the other one is user agent it doesn't really matter we're just going to call it user or me get joke um, app user agent is just something they want us to, to to send them so they know where it's coming from uh, okay so we've got our endpoint we've got our method we've got our headers next thing we need to do is we need to do something with the response that's coming back 
Now ServiceNow has given us this JSON parser activity which we're going to use which is great because it allows us to put the response body um, which I have already got here we can put that here paste our little sample and then we can click generate target and what that does is that creates the structure on the right hand side for us so we know what variable or what the variable types are we're nearly at two minutes okay so now we need to go to outputs and we need to give this activity an output which which we can then consume so we're going to call it result uh, ah what is it done that result and the type is an object since that's what is on the json pass step it's an object here root is an object and I want to get it all object, um, the whole object. So I'm going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to save. Oh, was that a good idea to save? Next thing we need to do is we need to make sure, and this is crucial, need to make sure, because we're going to run this via a script and not via a flow or a subflow, we need to make sure that this is accessible and it's client callable. So we need to go to manage security. But before that, we need to set up an ACL. So we're going to go here. We're going to set up an access control. Now this bit, again, is quite important. and It, it can catch you out. So we need to create an access control and client callable flow object. I'm going to give it a name of um, call action. Admin overrides. We don't need to put a role since I have admin. Okay, so we're nearly there. We're nearly there. Okay, let's go back to our action. Go to manage security. Select client callable API. ACLs. We're going to select the one I've just created. Put in that. Update. Publish. Go, 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 go. Ah, Publish. Okay, we're at 3 minutes 15. Are we going to make this? We might. We've got a UI action to create. Come on. Right, okay. Then we go to code snippet, and we want to pick the one that's the client side, and we're going to grab that. Select, copy code snippet. Back over to our application. We're going to create UI action. We're going to do this. Oh, it's going to be very, very tight. Right, UI action. We're going to call it get joke. We're going to do it on the incident table because uh, why not? Um, we need to make it client callable, make it a form button. We're going to say, okay, on click, get joke. Okay, don't let me down. Function, get joke. Okay. And then I, that's where I paste in the information that I had before, but I'm going to remove these bits so it's not self invoking. Um, and it gives us this little red um, token error. We've got 50 seconds left. So we just need to resolve that by removing that there and doing that. Now we need to put the outputs on the form. So we're going to do a G form. Uh, what should we do? Add info message. Add info message. And we're going to make the info message result dot joke. So the object that we're getting back from the script is result um, and the 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 attribute within the object is called joke since that's the joke itself stop the clock was that fair to stop the clock I hadn't saved we'll save so four minutes 41 seconds has this worked we haven't tested it at all so let's head over to an incident and let's just pick one we should have our UI action oh well, thank god we have so if we click this now, he says, fingers crossed, come on, oh, ho, ho, ho. excellent, right, why did the miner get fired from his job, he took it for granite, right, very funny, right, should we just, let's roll the dice once more, let's give it another shot, we're waiting for the, the return journey and the promise to come back, uh, what's the next joke? The other day, my wife asked me to pass her lipstick, but I actually passed her a glue stick. She still isn't talking to me. Ha, ha, ha. Right. I think, let's, let's be fair, the jokes aren't great, right? Um, but I guess what I wanted to do is prove the, the, the fact that it doesn't take a lot of time to set up um, a REST call in ServiceNow, and certainly not one using Flow Designer. And I wanted to show you a few different concepts. Um, which I guess what we can do now is we'll step back through what I've done a tiny bit slower just so I can point out the bits that I think are important. Okay, so let, let's have a look what we did. So we created an application um, and then we put our flow designer action in that. Well, why did we do that? Well, we did that because effectively what we've done is created our own spoke. So if we wanted to create any more actions for this, this joke um, application, 
then they would all sit within the spoke of um, joke or get joke, or whatever I call the application. And that's why we did that. So if we take a look at the action we actually created, so in this case, it's a very, very simple get. All it's doing is hitting an endpoint, virtually no, well, actually no parameters we're passing in, and it's just simply telling us a joke. It's just sending us effectively three lines, an ID, a joke, and a status. So there's not a lot to it. So we don't really need to send an input. We're not sending anything, any query parameters across. So that's the first thing. We, we don't need any inputs in there. We use the rest step, which is um, service now out the box. I'm pretty sure it's, it's part of the integration hub, um, which so it comes with a rest step. So we're using that. So what have we done here? Connection, we've decided to define it in line, which means we're defining it on this action itself. We could do it via a connection alias. Again, I'm going to do a different video on that, I think. But we see we can set up connect, uh, connection aliases where you put in kind of the, the base URL and the authentication and you just um, access it or select it from the form. But we chose to do it all on this form. We've got the base URL. We've got no resource path because it's very, very simple. We're building it manually. Here's the method. Again, we could play with these, but this is a simple get. We're using the headers that they've told us or that website told me to use. We're not touching anything else. We could do retry policies or we could save the response to the attachment. We've not bothered. The other action I wanted to bring to your attention is the JSON pass step. Now, this is really, really useful. Um, what I could have done is not bothered with the JSON pass step and just output um, the response object as a string and then handled that within the client script if I wanted to. I could have passed that as a J, um, JSON passed that and got at the, the particular joke um, attribute. But I wanted to show you this. This is really, really useful. Um, and it, and it, it gets a lot more useful when you've got more objects or more attributes within the response body coming back. So what you do is you essentially select what the, res uh, the source data is, which is the response body. And when you're doing APIs or connecting to um, uh, an endpoint, they should or typically give you an example response, which you can then grab that object, paste it in here, and then click this generate target. And it gives you this structure here, and it even tells you what type it is. So you've got the root is an object, and inside that you've got three attributes, and they're all strings. Okay? And that's what they look like. Status, joke, ID. So then what we do in the app output is we map our um, output, so we created it, called it result. We mapped that to um, this here, to this thing. So we said output is equal to root, which means that when we when we're um, calling this this action, we've got access to all this response body um, in the type of an object. If you look here, it's type of an object. Okay, so it's already done that for us. So though, though the rest step and the JSON pass step are things that I wanted to call out. The other thing, um, the other two things I wanted to call out is when you we can click code snippet. So you don't have to run a flow or a subflow to invoke an action. You can do it via a script, via a, um, a business rule, a script include, or you can do it via a, a client script um, or even a UI action like we did. Now at the top here, you've got different types um, or different code snippets to use, server or client. Now, when you click client, it's going to say a little um, message along the top, say, make sure this action is client callable. So just like a script include, you've got that little tick box. We need to do the similar thing for here as well. And it'll give you the code snippet. And this bit's the interesting bit. Results, so this is the, the outputs. So had I have put more outputs in there, it would have given me more outputs to play with here. Now, when I, um, when I, access this from the UI script or the UI action sorry it's this bit is the result that I want to get and put on screen now I know that's a type of object because it's telling me a type of object and I also know that joke is what I want to access um, the attribute of joke so we've got a response object and an attribute with inside that called joke and that's what I've got so in order to make this client callable what you need to do and this just be aware of this is click on manage security and we get this client make um, or callable by client API, and that needs to be selected. And what you need to do is create an ACL, 
just like we did here which then we can apply to that which means this person or this role has access to invoke this action via a client side script now I selected admin overrides um, again we could do that and then we could put a specific role in so if you wanted to invoke um, an action in flow designer via a UI action but only wanted certain people to do that you could do that at the UI action level um, to say that only these people can see the UI action but you could equally do it here as well so you can see only these people with the role can um, has got access to this ACL and therefore can invoke it okay and th that's really important to do as well then last but not least we've got the UI action so if we look here again I was very very fast um, I might have done this slightly differently but I simply just used the script I had to tidy it up a little bit I think there might be a tiny bit of a bug there actually if I'm being honest um, when you have to move if you remember it looked like this and I just had to move that to there okay and this uh, here this is where uh, this is what I was talking about before is where I'm getting the object object dot attribute and that's what we want to display okay so there we have it we have managed to make ServiceNow funny in under five minutes um, we've done it using flow designer we've created an action with rest and the JSON parser and we've used it at, and we've called it via a script via the UI action to present that on screen so I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen today um, I know it's a bit fast but I wanted to do something quite short and snappy um, if there's anything you want me to expand on um, that I've shown you today I realize it was quite quick um, drop something in the comments below um, or if there's any different ideas for videos you want me to do again comments below if you haven't subscribed and you enjoyed what you see please do so um, and give it give me some motivation to keep going with these um, hit the bell icon hit like do all the other things that you do on YouTube videos and I'll see you next time thanks